Welcome to this video. I'm going to be demoing the new eTool LCD uh, plugin for Revit. So I've downloaded the Revit plugin and I've installed it. Um, in this case, it's on Revit 2017, but we have versions for 2018 and 2019. I've opened a Revit file. In this case, it's just the demo project that comes with Revit. And I need to link my Revit model with a model in eTool LCD so I can pass the data. So uh, I'll just run through that again. We find the eTool uh, plugin tab. We'll log into eTool LCD. Oops. It'll uh, um, pop up a browser, which we can either close or minimize. And then I need to link this design. So I'd hit the link design uh, button here. This brings up a list of my projects um, uh, associated with that with my uh, eTool LCD account. Uh, I can also create a new project or um, hit refresh to refresh to see if a new project's been created. Uh, once I've selected my design that I want to link with the Revit model, I can hit link here and then I can hit the update eTool LCD button here. Note that after your first import, if you change the quantities in your model and you hit update again, it'll update the quantities in eTool. Uh, so it's not just a one-off transfer, it, it, it maintains that, that uh, component integrity between the two models. So you might have noticed there was a couple of steps um, in, in, uh, uh, in, in the um, transfer, process, transfer process. So first it gathers all the components and then it sends them to eTool and, and uh, then it uh, finishes the process uh, and, and uh, pops the browser up for you. This drops this file into your eTool model. So at the moment, there's no impacts accounted for. Um, we need to do some matching between uh, matching our components in Revit with our templates in eTool. Note that uh, the way eTool LCD works is, a, is different to some, uh, well, most other um, LCA uh, plugins for uh, BIM tools in that it's... Uh, it's matching components with eTool templates rather than trying to match materials with materials. The advantage of this um, is that you can use relatively immature um, BIM models where you haven't defined your materials yet. You've only got some uh, rough geometry uh, and also enables you to calculate accurately um, your transport distances for your materials or your installation processes and a host of other parameters that are only available in the eTool templates. So what I need to do is match my templates up. So I should be able to find a 150mm uh, floor somewhere here. Um, here we go, 150mm slab for this first uh, component from Revit. So there's your Revit component details on the left. I need to choose which quantity I want to use so I can see my templates using meters squared. So I'm going to choose the area quantity for that one. Uh, you just work your way through um, these different um, uh, different uh, uh, Revit templates. Occasionally you'll come across one where you don't have an eTool template or it doesn't exactly match. Um, you can finish the um, import and come back and edit that afterwards. Um, so I'll just show you that functionality very quickly. I'll show you what happens once you've um, imported your, your information. So as you can see here, it's um, actually calculated some impacts for people, equipment and uh, superstructure, or substructure, sorry. So you have your reinforcement bar, your poured concrete and your formwork. And you have your people, like installation impacts, transport of equipment and equipment impacts on site as well. So you're getting a pretty full profile for that one component. We'd obviously be updating all our components 